How would you like to live on the moon or Mars, but with the comforts of Earth? It may soon be possible. Imagine living in a glass dome, looking out over the surface of Mars or the moon. NASA and the Japanese Kyoto University are working on this idea together. How will they do this? What's the thought behind it? Let's find out. There has been an agreement reached between Kyoto University and Kajima Construction to commence research on the realization of the glass. Residential space on Mars and the moon will be made possible by the construction of the glass, a cylindrical living architecture with artificial gravity. Cylindrical space travel architecture provides a lifestyle that is similar to that of Earth according to graphics exhibited during the press conference on July 6th. Public transportation, parks, and bodies of water are all part of this way of life. Japan's space exploration teams have seen that humans are gradually moving away from the idea of residing in outer space and toward the idea of living on the moon and Mars. Inquiring about their abilities to carry out such a large-scale project, they laid out the conditions, resources, and viewpoints that would be required to make it a reality. It was decided that they would focus their research on three separate subjects. Their first concern was the impending dilemma that would arise due to the moon's low gravity and the recent advances in artificial gravity, notably in medicine. As far as the teams are concerned, living in space is only a matter of time and NASA sees low gravity as a major obstacle for humans in space. Low gravity research, on the other hand, has mainly focused on the body's maintenance. No studies have looked at the impact on childbirth or development. According to them, the absence of gravity might make it impossible for animals to give birth effectively or predict their normal growth in an environment with low gravity. Upon their return to Earth after being reared in a low gravity environment, those who have been raised in this manner are unable to stand straight on their own. As reported by the group, to get humans to the moon and Mars, we'll need a device called an artificial gravity living facility that can generate gravity similar to the global environment by harnessing centrifugal force to rotation in space, moon, and Mars surface. As a result, we're thinking about building a home with a gravity generator it's possible for humans to reproduce and raise a family while also having a body that can return to Earth at any time thanks to a living system fueled by artificial gravity. Artificial gravity transport facility that is also used for the general public transportation. All that has been included in the Japanese team's strategy for space migration thus far has been the preservation of the requirements for human survival throughout migration. Oxygen and water, food, energy, and nature or a natural environment. A plan based on the way society works in the celestial environment is necessary if one is going to contemplate existence beyond our planet. In an outer space culture, clothing, food, and housing would all be essential for survival. We foresee a future in which humans migrate to the moon and Mars in the second half of the 21st century. And we define the core biome complex as the global ecosystem from which elements have been removed. Humanity will be able to go to the moon and Mars in the second half of the 21st century, we believe. One of their objectives is to build a mini core biome inside the artificial gravity living facility. They also want to contribute to the project's human civilization and environmental preservation. As for public transportation, the team's goal is to build the Hexatrack system, an interplanetary transportation system that can move at 1G over long distances between Earth, the moon, and Mars. A future space society where people can live on the moon and Mars is envisioned by the teams. People in this civilization will travel for business and tourism, and each colony or residential group will engage in economic activities. In order to counteract the detrimental effects of low gravity on their health, they want to build an artificial gravity transportation system that revolves around the railway system. This is all being done to make their life a little bit easier. So far, the teams have begun to give the stations names, with Luna Station for the Lunar Outpost, Mars Station for the Martian Outpost, and Terra Station for the Earth Station. All three of these outposts have been given names. The International Space Station will be replaced 
replaced by Terra Station, an artificial gravity facility from Japan. SIC Manned Cosmology Research Center and Graduate School of Advanced Integrated Studies Director Yosuke Yamashiki stated that while the United States and the United Arab Emirates are actively proposing the migration to Mars, the Japanese teams would like to send out a completely original idea from Japan. During interactions over the last five years, the director claims to have been convinced that the three pillars they offer are key technologies that other countries haven't planned for and are necessary to ensure the future success of human space colonization. An artificial gravity residential facility being developed with Kyoto University, according to senior researcher Takuya Ono of Kajima Construction, is an important step forward in space living and tourism. Ono says he is grateful to Kyoto University for allowing him to work on the development of an artificial gravity residence. As he said, we shall attempt to make this united research relevant for humankind and we want to achieve exactly that. NASA is also considering building an artificial intelligence space factory on the moon, in addition to the so-called Space Dome. Artificial intelligence company AI Space Factory and NASA collaborated on the development of lunar surface construction technologies for the Artemis mission, which is the return of humanity to the moon. LENA, Lunar Infrastructure Asset, is a 3D printed lunar colony. LENA stands for Lunar Infrastructure Asset, which is the monitor given to LENA by its developers. In fact, the Artemis mission will transport astronauts to the lunar south pole in the next decade, a site known as the Peak of Eternal Light, where the sun is constantly visible and at a low angle of incidence. This will be the first time humans have ever set foot on the moon's far side. Craters on the rim of this area should provide constant illumination for solar power collection. Craters with permanently shaded areas are also likely to be at this location, making it an ideal spot for capturing water. A 2.7 meter thick regolith overburden rests on top of Lena's razor thin outer shell. An ultra lightweight mass optimized structure is created that defends against potentially harmful cosmic radiation. For the moon, Lena aims to be simple, but strategic, expressive, and adaptive. An individual unit of the lunar outpost, Lena, can be expanded into an entire systemic cluster of outposts. In contrast, AI Space Factory's Mars surface dwelling, Marsha, was designed as a freestanding device. Its orientation provides self-shading, relying on the lunar surface's topography to shield it from the sun and space radiation. Lena will be built by robots near the Shackleton Crater on the moon's south pole. For solar power and water ice collecting, this location was chosen because it is near constant sunlight on the crater's peaks and permanent shadow on the crater's interior. Outpost Romanesque arches, which are meant to sustain tremendous compressive loads with only a tiny quantity of material, would be covered with 2.7 meters of lunar regolith. This would provide the best potential protection against radiation, micrometeorites, lunar seismic activity, also known as moonquakes, and extreme temperature variations. AI Space Factory's polymer composite will also enable the building of a long-lasting and sustainable structure, which means it can support long-term life and travel to other planets. Space-rated 3D printing systems are being developed that can operate at temperatures between negative 170 degrees Celsius and 70 degrees Celsius, according to AI Space Factory. Lena will be the end result of this work. Now, a lunar environmental chamber is being used to test the first prototype of this kind, which was built in conjunction with NASA and has been placed near the Kennedy Space Center to mimic the conditions of the Southern Hemisphere. It was made by NASA's Granular Mechanics and Regolith Operations Lab, which synthesized the 3D printing material from BP-1 lunar simulant and then performed static extrusion tests. In order to create LENA, a high-performance blend of lunar regolith and an Earth-sourced polymer binder will be used. Research at AI Space Factory looked at a wide range of shapes, including thick and thin 
shells in order to reduce the demand for polymer from Earth. They used a parabolic cross-section to keep the loads in compression. Ultimately, the company realized that a lightweight structure with a diagonal bracing rib achieved the finest balance between the weight it carried and the weight it could hold. An enormous rocket fairing will fit perfectly in this geometry's five-meter wide circle. The circle touches the ground at a 70-degree angle in order to maximize the amount of room inside. Do you have any thoughts on the numerous ideas that are being put forth? Has your faith been bolstered? Are we taking the first step toward a future in which humans are annihilated? We appreciate you viewing the video all the way through. We have another film that is likely to pick your attention, and we are confident that you are going to adore watching it. Simply watch the video by selecting it from the options that appear on your screen. See you next time.